What's up, everyone? I'm Alexis Yunez, and welcome back to another edition of Mute Me, our debate show here at ESPN, where we get some of the brightest minds to argue some of the toughest topics in the world of sports. We're getting Premier League crazy in this edition because the new season is upon us. So let's get to know our panel, some very familiar faces that we all know love a good argument here at ESPN. He's just just finished crying after PSG's loss in the Champions League final. It is Julian Laurence, and I cannot speak about Julian Laurence without his podcast's better half, the best thing to come out of Italy since pizza, pasta, and Fabio Cannavaro. It is Gab Marcotti. And finally, if it's lit in Manchester, that means this man is involved. It's our King of the North, King of Manchester, Mark Ogden. So these guys are getting ready. They've got some very juicy topics. The key is to argue for 60 seconds in round one with your topic without getting muted. The rest of the panel, if they've had enough, they can mute you as of 15 seconds in. So you got to be snappy. Guys, are you ready? Let's get straight into round one in no particular order. Let's start with my favorite crybaby, Julia Laurence. Jules, give us your argument. Right, let's start with the champions and Liverpool. I think this is the time for Naby Keita to shine. I think it would be the X factor for Liverpool this season. We saw after the restart uh, back in, in July how good it could have been against Brighton, for example, against Chelsea as well at Anfield. I think he would be the one that will keep this team and take this team to the next level now. He's fantastic on the ball. He creates far more than any of the other midfielders that they have in that team. And I think he just needed a bit of time to adapt to the Premier League, to adapt to Klopp and the way the team is playing. He had a, a bit of injuries as well. But in terms of talent, in terms of what he can bring to this team, his energy, the way he presses, what he can do with the ball, I don't think there's anyone in this Liverpool squad that can do the same job as him. So I really believe this is his time. This is his season. He will smash it, absolutely smash it. Mm. That's his one for you. All right, well, Jules finished his argument with a, no, not no, even more. A no need, no need to say any more. Enough of the Nabi Keita. How many chances does this, this guy need? Like, how can you definitively... Like, I agree with you, he's supposed to be the guy. Oh, so you agree with me? You agree with me? I agree with you, he's supposed to be it. You I'm not telling you you can be so confident that he will be it. He's basically had, counting his last season at Leipzig, he's basically had, what, three bad seasons? Three seasons in which he hasn't lived what? up to his transfer fee? No, nah. I have to agree with Gab. I, mean, I think Jules, you're making a case about somebody that people barely, barely know anymore. He's, he's barely played. He's, he's almost like the bit part player of Liverpool. It's he was Liverpool's best player year. after the restart. First of all, how did Augie <laughs> agree with they Gab? The league by then. It, was all, it, was all, it was the easiest part of the year to be a Liverpool player when there's no pressure on him. Why, why, why do you want to judge him? Why do they want Thiago or Contara? He's 12 years old. I mean, what is this? Like, why do, why do they want Thiago? Games? Do they want Thiago to replace, to, just, just to make Naby feel better or just to replace him because he's not done, not done his job? Anyway, listen, I, I understand that he speaks French, you like him because he speaks French. Don't play the same football. You don't compare <laughs> Thiago and French, Naby Keita. I mean, and Jules on. likes anyone that speaks French. That is one of the brilliant rebuttals, and as that's well. how we pay Augie some of the big <laughs> bucks. But Augie, you agree with Gab, but you didn't yeah. decide to mute. So you're going to be up next. Tell us your argument. Well, my argument is that I think Gareth Bale should do what James Rodriguez is doing and, and leave Real Madrid and get back to the Premier League. And... You know, Bale is now 31 and he's letting his career go to waste. You know, he's, he's won four Champions Leagues at Real. He's, people who say he's failed at rubbish. He's had, a, he's had a fantastic time at Real, successful time, seven years there. But the reality is, we saw a picture of him last week training with Wales and this, his, his long lion mane hair, these grey flecks of hair. And it's like, Gareth, you're getting old, you're 31. Look at Ronaldo, he's, he's nearly 36. He's still mm, making records and making, making achievements. Gareth Bale is just happy to sit at Real Madrid. Move on, enjoy the rest of your career, do something with your time. Oh, Augie Don't has sit on the been bench. muted. Augie's been muted. Jules, you were the first one that wasn't buying it. Why is that? I wanted to mute you after five, after three seconds anyway. <laughs> when you said Gareth, uh, I was like, what? why are we talking even about the dude, man? Come on. It's just not, there's, there's no point. There's no point. It's, he's not going to come back to the Premier League. He's only far too much. But he's saying he should come back to the Premier League. But no one wants him. I'm not even sure he wants to come back to the Premier League either. He likes the life in Spain and good for him. Let's bring Augie back in. Augie, he said nobody wants Gareth. I feel like there'll be a few techers. It'd be takers if he has a pay cut and drops maybe a sixth of his wages. But I just think that he's a talent. He's had injuries, of course he has, but he's a talented player. He can make a difference. I just feel if you're Gareth Bale, you've got a Euros next summer, 
Why sit and Who do cares? Those? We're supposed like, to be talking about the Premier League. I know. Well, I'm sorry, you're, you're being Premier Captain Obvious about sorry. Captain Irrelevant here. The man follow is not Hames relevant, Rod okay? Follow James so, Rodriguez from Rebel to the Premier League. That, that's the point. Yeah, the you know Premier what your League, difference? You know? James Rodriguez tienes cojones. The man has stones. The man challenges himself. The so man Gareth goes on Bell should show his cojones. Whatever. This Gareth guy Bell does not. Should, the, the point, Gareth Bell should follow James Rodriguez by showing his cojones and go to the Premier League. You know what? Wow. There's plenty of good golf courses in the Premier League in Manchester, in Liverpool, in Newcastle. <laughs> yeah, playing well, golf in the rain is a lot of fun. <laughs> On that, we will end that quick round there with from Mark's point. Let's get straight into Gab's point because Gab was rolling his eyes so hard there that I think he saw the back of his skull. But Gab, give us your argument. <laughs> yeah, so my argument is simply that right now, yes, Chelsea have spent a ton of money. They have a big squad. Things could still change. But when I look at this team, I ask myself, who is guaranteed to start? It's only Ben Chilwell. And if he stays, N'Golo Conte. I don't think there's one other person who's in a position right now where they know 100%, yeah, I'm going to start. Frank Lampard Jr. has my back. So I think this is going to be one of those seasons oh where God. everybody's... Oh, wow, Gab. I thought you were going with a good point there, but they're not buying it. Jules, why are you buying it? I mean, what, Timo Werner is not guaranteed to start. Kai Havertz is not guaranteed to start. You spend that money and you're not going to play them. <laughs> oh, we got to unmute Gab. You still mute because it's rubbish, because your point <laughs> is rubbish. That's why you still muted. He muted it's himself. Not, yo, yeah, 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 yeah. So you got a manager. We don't know what formation he's going to play. He likes the idea of putting people in competition with each other. You think he's going to turn to Mason Mount and be like, hey, Mason Mount. You're never going to play. You have no choice of playing. Ha, ha, ha. Because I've just signed this guy. You think he's going to say this to Tammy Abraham? Or indeed, to your buddy and my buddy, the very handsome Olivier Giroud. You think he's going to say, oh, Olivier, this, this little German dude's going to run around. You think he's going to tell Pulisic? German oh, look. dude. Oh, <laughs> we'll end this one. And we're going to go to the next topic right now. And I'm going to pick on Augie once more. Augie, what is your next topic? I think that there's no way the guys are going to mute me on this because this is about the worst kit I've ever seen. It's Man United's new third strip. It's this, it's this black and white horror show, which apparently has been based on dazzle camouflage, which they used to decorate the, the ships in World War One to stop people, you know, seeing the ships on the sea. It is the worst. I'm just going to mute Augie right there because that is not the worst kit I've ever seen. And I actually kind of like it. I think a couple of the guys like... Pogba, Wambisaka, Rashi can pull it off. I no kind of way. Like it, bro. No Going up. First of all, I wasn't talking to you, Jules, and I'm no definitely chance. not taking fashion advice from three dads. So we are moving on. We're <laughs> going to move on to round two. Round two, pretty simple. I'm going to throw out a bunch of topics, statements rather, very bold statements, and I want you guys to either argue for or against it. Mesut Ozil should still be starting for Arsenal. No. How are we even no. debating this? The guy is out of contract at the end of the season. He's obviously not part of the future. They have enough old guys anyway, and they cleverly added William to the best club in London. So enough of this. Move on. I'm not going to blame the guy for, for, for not wanting to leave or take a pick out or whatever, but Arteta should definitely not be building his team around him. Yeah, I'm with Gab. I mean, he invested in, uh, in bakeries and delis in London. He can go and make pan au chocolat. No, listen, I, I agree with the guys. Mesut Ozil's time is long gone. He, he should have gone when Sanchez went two years ago. They shouldn't have given a new contract. So, no, that ship has sailed. Off you go. Wow, that's the first time I've seen all of you guys agree. That was actually beautiful to see. Teamwork makes a dream work. Let's move on to the next topic now. And I'm going to go with James Rodriguez has now made Everton European contenders again. James Rodriguez will get the ball and have to pass it to Theo Walker or to Alex Uwobi. You know, this is the problem. He might be the best player in the world. He might be the Lionel Messi of Everton. But look at the players around him. Everton, for me, uh, no, I don't know. I'm, listen, it's going to be a long season at Everton because I think James might do well. He might be a disaster. Yeah, I want him to do well. Italian manager? I have got a ton of love for the guy. But when you talk about making them European contenders, presumably you're meaning they will contend for a spot in the Europa League. Well, Sheffield United contended for a spot in the Europa League. Uh, Everton have the seventh highest uh, wage bill in the Premier League. So it's legitimate that they contend for a spot in Europe. If that's what you mean, then yeah, sure, they'll be contending for a spot in Europe. But they are 
the big six and Wolves, who I think are clearly a notch above them right now. All right, great points there, guys. Let's move on to the next topic. Here's another juicy one. I did not come up with these topics, by the way, before you, Julia LaRoz, tries to attack me, but here's a juicy one. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be the most successful Manchester United manager since Sir Alex Ferguson. Uh, that's, that's either from you or from Oggy. No, I've not I said mean, that. Yeah, um, Oggy, come on. No. I must put that up. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to win something first. He's got to win two. Listen, to be that, he's got to win two trophies like Mourinho did or to come even close. So, or I finish think, second like Mourinho and Van yeah, Gaal did. And not, and not lose semi finals all the time. So, I think he's got a long way to go before he becomes the best manager since Fergie. But it's, it's quite a low bar, to be honest. But I don't think even Solskjaer can clear that. Can we agree he's the nicest human being to manage uh, Manchester United since David Moyes? Yes, and if we're going to be like Arsene Wenger and come up with our own trophies, then that is a trophy in and of itself. <laughs> Moving on to the next one. <laughs> Gini Vinaldum is or was Liverpool's most underrated player ever of all time. That's uh, my boy. I, that's my, I mean, that's my boy. Yeah. For me, he should have been the PFA player of the year, the writer's player of the year, the watcher's, uh, like, uh, like broadcaster's team player of the year. Every player of the year he should have had. You know how much I love him. And I do think that he was completely undervalued by a lot of people, uh, like you said, under whatever word you well, use. Not and by me, because I, I had the Twitter week from hell when, I, uh, when, when Gab and I did the keep or dunk with Liverpool. And I suggested, you know, unbelievably, that if Liverpool had to sell one or the other, I'd sell Henderson ahead of Wijnaldum. And it was like, Henderson, Shit. he's the player of the year. He's the best player we've got. He's our captain. Uh, it, it's not as important to Liverpool as Gini Wijnaldum because Wijnaldum's a better player, more intelligent player, can play more positions. But I, it was almost like I said, you know, that the, the world is going to end tomorrow, that you should sell Henderson ahead of Wijnaldum. Yeah, that, 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 that was a bit bad, Augie. But look, um, Wijnaldum, first of all, I thought he was much better two years ago than he was this last season. Uh, he's 29 years old. He's got a year left on his contract. I go back to what I said earlier about having all these guys close to 30 on massive deals. Let the guy earn his payday. It will be somewhere else. You cannot extend him. You've got Oxlade Chamberlain ready to step in. That was not the question. The question was not, should you sell him or not? The question was, is he underrated? That was the oh. question. No, no. The question is, no, 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 no. The question was, is he the most underrated player in the history of Liverpool? Get yeah. your facts right. The most underrated player in the history of Liverpool is my mate and yours, Stevie Nicol. Hey! <laughs> I agree on that point. We're the conversation done. We're moving on. We have space for one more. Jose Mourinho will 100% bring a trophy to Tottenham this season. He would get an Oscar for the Amazon documentary and say, <laughs> tell a performance, <laughs> go on the red carpet, have a little speech, you know, and just go like, thank you to my mum, my dad, thank you to God as well for providing me with such a talent at acting. That's, that's the trophy he's going to win. Yeah. And he's going he's to get the thank you to uh, uh, Danny Rose for making me seem entirely reasonable and making himself seem like a weirdo spoiled brat. Um, no, look, if you say 100%, no. He's not going to 100% win something because two of the, the, the most realistic trophies he can win are the League Cup and the FA Cup. Those are knockout competitions. Knockout competitions are largely nonsense because uh, luck and randomness and all that stuff. Yeah, maybe the Europa League, but the Europa League is such a slog that, you know, it'd be difficult. But ah, do, Jose does, indeed. listen, Jose does not win the Europa League. And when he's at United, he made sure that they won it. He, he, he knows that the route back into the Champions League to the Europa League. So but this year's a strange year for all the reasons we know about. So, I'm not sure we'll win a trophy at Tottenham. I think it was the same old recent Jose story. It'll end in tears, crash and burn. I'm going to wrap it there because I'm still puffing up at Jules' Amazon Prime <laughs> trophy. <laughs> that was absolutely brilliant. I really don't know how I'm going to choose a winner um, from you guys. You guys have been absolutely spectacular. But just for fear of my own head being bitten off, I'm going to go with the man. Gab Marcotti. Gab, our Italian sensation, also because he brought up Stevie Nichol, and he's our Scottish sensation. But Jules, you won my heart in my fashion books because you are actually the best dressed dad I know. What did Augie win? Gini Winaldo, along with Jeannie Winaldo. So Doesn't there... Augie get to win something too? Um, Augie's yeah, the, you king of being here. Augie's the king of Manchester. He's already won. Yeah. He stays winning. But anyways, thanks to Gab, thanks to Jules, and thanks to Augie for joining us. Thanks to all of our viewers for watching. Make sure to tune in for another edition of Mute Me.
Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.